Nothing. Nothing right now. I mean, the guys are skating, uh, so there's a couple things I'll check on after they get off. Uh, but if uh, everything is good, it'll be status quo. Andres got rewarded the last game. What have you seen from that line with, with Gary and Cincinnati? Uh, Anders played a couple now. He's played really well uh, using his speed, um, jumping back in the lineup after a long duration out. Um, was really, really nice to see. Uh, and uh, him, him get rewarded for it, too, was obviously nice to see. Um, but, no, he's, he's good energy. Guys enjoy playing, you know, alongside him. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a teammate that, uh, you know, you throw him in the lineup, guys are excited that he's on there on the line with them. They communicate communicates very well on the bench and um, so it's it's good to have them in there. What have you admired most, Coach, about Owen Power's game? Is there anything at all too that has surprised you about his game? Yeah, uh, you know, before I even touch on Owen, I gotta tell you the, the guys around him are, are have responded extremely well. They're excited to have him. They're uh, if I felt have created an environment where he can come in and be himself. Um, and he's doing that. He's he's not afraid to make a mistake. He's uh, you know he's being assertive and aggressive where he can, and you know he's had uh, like every player you know trying to gauge uh, you know how assertive or aggressive you can be without becoming liable, um, uh, you know because of the skill level at this in this league. Uh, he's worked his way through that through a few games, and I thought the guys around him have supported him w well, very well to that endeavor. Uh, but he is, he has an extremely um, uh, competent base of game knowledge, positional knowledge, situational awareness that uh, you, you often spend a lot of time as coach in coaching trying to teach young guys or talk to young guys about that, you know, situational awareness, uh, game knowledge. Uh, and he has an incredible base, and, and he's had it. A lot of it's natural. I think it comes from him just watching the game and studying the game and studying his position over the years because uh, I saw it in him years ago You know, when I first saw him play five, six years ago, and I've watched him since. And, and that, for me, was exciting to have him in the lineup because he, he just does things that you're actually trying to teach other players uh, through development. So. Nice to have him in there. He's done a great job, and the guys around him have helped uh, that cause. I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you think that second year of college hockey helped him? Uh, absolutely. Every year of college hockey, every year of hockey in general, helps a player that's dialed in like that. You know, wherever he chose to go, he was gonna he was gonna improve. There's no doubt. I was happy that he chose college hockey again. Uh, he was gonna go into something with a year of hindsight. He didn't have that the prior year as a freshman. Obviously, you don't have that hindsight. So he could target things, and uh, and I th I felt he did. He went in to his sophomore year saying I want with some objectives, clear objectives with hindsight uh, that I thought is I th I know is valuable for for guys like him um, to to have that opportunity to not you know forego that opportunity, um, and uh, so I was real happy that he did that. And uh, yes, college hockey, especially. especially you know, the, the college hockey today is, is tough. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's uh, not a lot of games, but it's, there's no easy game in college hockey. And uh, especially when you're wearing the tag that he is of, uh, of a top, top player at a young age. So um, I think it was real good for him. How impressive was the Devils road trip that depleted the lineup to go 3-1-1 and now be coming off that? Very impressive. I mean, they're a team that... You know, they, they play a high, high-tempo game, and they can make you pay fast for, for even the slightest of error. They, they're, they're explosive, they're quick, uh, and they work hard. So, um, you know, I think our guys, I know our guys have, have developed a lot of respect for them, um, you know, uh, playing them as much as we have and getting familiar with them. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely a team on the rise. You know, this is, you've got your own issues old club this weekend, but how big organizationally is it this weekend for what's going on in Rochester? Just how much are you guys desperate yeah. to see them get in those Mike, players? I'm smiling because uh, you, 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 I like the way you say you have your own issues. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have challenges, Mike, yeah, yeah. but uh, sometimes they are issues, yes. Um, it is, uh, it's, you know, in, in one sense, there's a lot of hype on making the playoffs, making the playoffs for, for I'm speaking of Rochester now. But the battle to the playoffs is something that's um, really good for guys. I mean, it's we're talking about development. So any 
you know, any adverse situation, any challenge you have to meet uh, pushes that development, uh, whether the result is positive or negative. It, you know, and the outcome, I should say, is positive or negative. The result is, is positive because you have, you have to, you know, face challenges. Sometimes you fall, fall short, but, you know, there's lessons in that. And for young guys, it's, it's good. And so I do like that uh, UPL has to play under that pressure and obviously uh, the other guys as well that are there. So um, it's good. I think, the, you know, I've, I've watched them. I mean, you know, I've watched them through the whole year. I, I love what's going on down there. Those guys, uh, every time I see them, they get better uh, as a team and they, and they fight hard as a team. So uh, lots of positive, uh, you know, regardless of, of uh you know, result or outcome. And it's an interesting way to put it. If they don't make it, you wouldn't characterize it. Maybe it might be disappointment, but you wouldn't characterize it as setback, right? Because no. Because they've gone through the process. No, I don't think you can characterize anything as a setback right now for where we are as a franchise. I think not working, not playing passionately, um, not committing to practice every day. I think those are setbacks. Um, I don't think an outcome of a game right now is a setback if you have those things in order because you know, young players, when they approach it the right way, they're going to get better and better, and that'll flip. And as we've talked about many times, so, so no, I don't. I think they're, uh, you know, I look at where they're at. I think it's a healthy position to be in uh, because they have the right things in order. They are playing the games hard and with passion, and they are showing improvement. Uh, every time I go see them, I see improvement. So uh, I think everything down there has been really, really good from uh, – from what I've seen and what I've know through experience, um, so I'm happy with that. Hey Don, could you speak to the technological advances that the league has made to help players, help the coaches on the bench, the replays, the real time thing that's going on? How yeah. beneficial has it been with all that? Yeah, I mean it's been a constant push for for years now uh, for the NHL to bring that technology to to the players uh, on the bench. Uh, obviously, we have uh, three or four iPads and you see the newer generation of player reaching for those things more. Um, you know, they, they've watched themselves more by virtue of they can. You know, you get youth hockey games all over the globe right now instantly. Uh, and those kids, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years old now have their own video. Uh, so, so the kids entering the league now have that, they're accustomed to that, and they use it. And uh, it's, it's nice to see. I know it's a real push for the NHL. We, we have... Uh, Lots of talks uh, consistently about new technology coming in the form of video and, and analytics, and um, it's it's as a coach, I love it. Tony, if I could ask one question, not to rehash the past. We talked about challenges spiritually, emotionally. When you took over, there were turbulent waters. What what did, what was your first step in trying to settle things down and, and establish what we're seeing now? Yeah, I, I think. You know, the the more turbulence and the turbulent waters you might speak of with with that is is ninety percent of that is is on the outside. It really is. It's 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 uh, write it, written about, talked about, um, but on the inside, and then it's and that influences the inside significantly. There is no question that does. So um, so for us, we just we had to turn really turn inside, and and just put in front of the players and bring them some clarity on what we have control over and what we are not controlling that we have control over. And when they, then they could see that and feel that instantly when we presented it to them. Like this is what we can, this is what we have control over that we're not taking control of. So let's focus, bring our attention and dedicate our effort to that. And that happened, that was really easy because we had great leadership. Uh, Kyle Ocposo, uh, was an incredible leader in that. Uh, so was Ristolainen and, and Reinhardt, who, who aren't with us. But they really helped uh, the rest of the team grasp, okay, well, let's turn our, dedicate all our attention to these few things that we have control of, and then we just built from there really quick. And, um, and it was fun. The guys immediately started to have fun. They felt like things that were, everybody was saying was out of their control. Uh, they, they just, it was all white noise. And, and to them, they had a very clear picture of what they, uh, they had a sense of objective, and they were excited once they had that. So, you know, much like this season where our guys, I, I would imagine you'd hear them say they don't want to go home, they don't want the season to end, that was the case at the end of last year. So they had built something really quick uh, in that turnaround, uh, and it was a credit to, again, that leadership in the room and even some guys that weren't here I mentioned that uh, are really important for me to mention because they, they were a big part of that. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, yeah. Tom.